tonight on the Disney Sunday Movie. My father was a dreamer. He died in a crazy exploit. Could you change things? Exactly 7.30 tomorrow morning. It'll be the right opening in time. Time. I came back to stop you from making that flight. You have to leave in exactly ten and a half hours. I want you to come with me. Peter Coyote, Huckleberry Fox, and Art Carney star in Time Flyer. It's the ultimate form of travel. My name is Michael Eisner, and welcome to the Disney Sunday Movie. This mystical contraption is one of the stars in tonight's movie, Time Flyer. It transports a young boy back through time to meet his grandfather, a proud and heroic flying ace. The result is an adventure that will hit you over the heart. So fasten your seatbelt, and let's take off on a mystical journey. No, no, Mickey, you can't go. We need you here. Minnie needs you. Pluto needs you. Chippendale needs you. The Disney family needs you.
Wasn't that last week's knock? We changed it, remember? Oh. Sure you weren't followed? Nope, not me. Hi, Henry. Jonathan, you can't stay too long today, because I'm working on something very important. Is it something Grandpa Max invented? Yep, it's something Max invented. What is it? Just something your grandfather never got a chance to build. Can I see it? When will you show it to me? Never mind that. I've got a surprise for you. Come here, watch this. Look at this. Wow. That's for you. But you gotta finish it. You paint it right, and it'll be the blue yonder. All right, Henry, see ya. four years. Pass the salt. Try it first. It needs more salt. You should be getting ready for Little League tryouts. Did you sign up yet? No. Um, I don't want to play. Where were you this afternoon? You came home awfully late. I was at Henry's. He gave me a great model of Grandpa Max's plane. Henry, huh? He's still filling your head with tales about Max? Jonathan, I like Henry. But really, he's making Max out to be a lot more than he was. What about all the inventions? Henry says... Jonathan, my father was a dreamer. He died in a crazy exploit. He was the best pilot that ever lived. some time now. Wow. Before I lived here, some bootlegger by the name of Finch owned the house. Used to hide all his hooch down here. The race to fly across the Atlantic. One of man's greatest challenges. 
A lot of men died trying, Jonathan. None got so in Coley, the best the French had. They took off from Paris on an east to west attempt. They were never heard from again. Hey, the American Legion. He told me about that one. I was there. Langley Field, right near here. The overloaded plane went down on the West Pond right after takeoff. The two pilots, Davis and Worcester, were killed instantly. To cross the Atlantic took more than just a good plane. It took a great man. Lucky Lindy, 21st of May, 1927. The world will never forget that day. Jonathan. Max made his try just four days earlier. It was his biggest dream to make it across the Atlantic. He went against his instincts, took the northern route, which was thought to be the best route in those days. He took off that morning, flew into a cloud, disappeared from the face of the earth. Who knows, if he had trusted himself, flown his own course, Max's dream might have come true. But people are gonna remember the name Max Knickerbocker. I'm gonna make sure of that. I swear it. See that he gets his medications at six. Where's Henry? What's wrong? What's wrong? Too bad your grandpa didn't invent a mechanical heart. Sure would come in handy now. Wanna pour me some of that? Oh boy. Easy does it. Thank you. That's the bee's knees. You can't beat warm buttermilk. Hey, Jonathan. What if I told you I wasn't going to be around much longer? What do you mean? Sure you are. Listen. Max was my best friend. Greatest man I ever knew. 
You know, he came up with some inventions that even I thought were nuts. I never thought it'd be worth building. But when I realized how little time I had left, I had to try it. For Max. So what? Max called it the time traveler. You mean those blueprints I saw? According to your grandpa's notes, I figured out that exactly 7.30 tomorrow morning, there'd be the right opening in time. Just a crack. It comes only once. If it closes before you can return, Mike said a man could vanish forever. Tomorrow, Jonathan, I was going to try to go back in time. Save Max's life. Can you really save Max? I don't know. I was going to test the machine today. It's all set to go. Now we'll never know. But I can help you. No, 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 Jonathan. That machine is untested. Anything could happen.
Don't drink the profit. Put that back. What do you think you're doing here? Who's this kid? I don't know, but he almost made me crash. Hey, hey! I got you trespassing again. I'm gonna turn you over to the cops, you hear me? Sign? Uh, w would you fix that sign for me, please? A kid? The sign. That's, uh, that's quite a get-up you got on there. <laughs> What's the matter? You've never seen a filling station before? Not one this old. Old? It's just open. Did you see that car? I sure did. hasn't been built yet? Greenfield's a swamp. I go to school there. You go to school in a swamp? Anyway, I'm trying to find my grandfather. He is near here. Well, what do you want from me? Try the telephone. Laura. Yes, sir. Who? I mean Knickerbocker. Max Knickerbocker. He flies planes and he lives around here. Lives here? Never heard of him. Oh, thanks. Hey, uh, where'd you get that haircut? Uh
quarter pounder, please. Quarter pound of what? A hamburger. No, we don't sell hamburgers here. This is McDonald's, isn't it? Yeah, this is McDonald's. I thought you specialized in hamburgers. A joint that specializes just in hamburgers. Nah, you'd have to sell a billion of them. Now, look, Sonny, the only thing I got here that you can eat right now is chewing gum. OK. Can I have sugar free? Say again? I said, can I have sugar free? You're lucky to be getting the gum. Well, why should I give you sugar free? Why not? Why should I? I've got money. But if you got money, why are you asking for sugar free? What's the commotion? Hello, son. You're not going to believe this, kid. Now, go ahead, ask her. He gave me gum, and I asked for sugar free. I've got money. Well, if you've got money, why are you asking for sugar free? That's what I've been trying to figure out. No, I want gum with no sugar. Gum with no sugar? That's a laugh. <laughs> Run along, Sonny. Gum with no sugar. Yeah, for fat people. <laughs> hey, what a great idea. <laughs> No library, kid. Uh, you know Max Knickerbocker? Who? He flies planes. Max Knickerbocker. I thought everyone knew him. Never heard of the guy. Now, if you ain't buying nothing, beat it. I'll have that one, that one, and one of these. Oh, and this newspaper, too. As long as you got the dough. Is a dollar enough? Hmm. It ought to be. It comes to a grand total of 17 cents. From around here, are you? Uh, no, I'm kind of new here. Hey, kid, I do know someone out at the Stone Mill Farm who fools around with airplanes. Maybe he knows this guy you're looking for. Really? How do you get there? Straight out this road, just a few miles. Can't miss it. Thanks.
Are you all right? I'll be darned. The thing flew. <laughs> I got to work on that landing, though. <clears throat> oh. Do you need any help? No, 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 I'm fine. Over to your left, there's a branch under your other foot. Ah, yeah, thanks. I got it now. Oh! I got to do something about that tree, too. Oh. Are you sure you're okay? Me? Uh, yeah. I'm fine. My name is Max Knickerbocker. Who are you? Johnson. Johnson Nick. How about that? Almost the same last name as mine. You, uh, from around here? Well, yeah. Well, not exactly from around here. Yeah? Well, where are you from, exactly? Well, um... You one of those boys from the Plainfield Orphanage? I know most of those kids, but I've never seen you before. That's okay. That'll be your secret. You don't have to tell me. Well, Mr. Nix, what can I do to repay your expert assistance and get me out of my precarious situation there? How about a big breakfast? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, French toast, bacon, lots of syrup, okay? Have you ever been around here before? No. Well, anyway, let's go. I'm starved. What about that? Well, it's as good a place for it as any. I still can't figure out how it got in here. Both doors were locked. This is extremely weird. Hey, Finch. Yeah? Look at the day on this. Where'd you get this? Kid came to the newsstand yesterday, and he paid for some candy with it. A kid? What'd this kid look like? Eleven years old, brown hair, and he was dressed funny. Yeah, I think I saw him out by my landing strip yesterday. Wilson almost came down right on top of it. This gotta be a phony. Yeah, if that's counterfeit, I want to shake the hands of the engraver and go right into business with him. No, no. No, no, that's the real McCoy, all right. And this, this... This is no ordinary machine. <gasps> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oh, I know what you're thinking. Those gauges, these gears, that bill, they've all got one thing in common. Time! And I ain't talking no clock. We may have just stumbled onto the find of the century. I think I lost you. Yeah, I can't believe it myself, but if this thing is what I think it is, why, we'd know the results of, of horse races, fights, anything before it happened. Do you know what kind of dough I'm talking about? That's impossible. Cool. Now, look, it's got a keyhole. That means there's got to be a key. And we know who's got it. Well, my wife is still asleep. So, I get hers. You know, that was an act of genius. Someone actually invented French toast. Why didn't I think of that? 
My dad never cooks. He's too busy. Why not? What's he too busy doing? He works for the president. Really? He works for Coolidge? Who? Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge, the president. All right, President Coolidge. Sergeant Leary, have I been a menace to the public again? I'm looking for someone. Good guy or bad? The kid. I hear he's looking for you. What would a kid be looking for me for? What'd he do? I ask the questions. You hiding the kid? Knickerbocker, I'm gonna nail you one of these days. Me and Finch don't take kindly to you telling these pilots not to fly for us. I'd tell any pilots to stay away from your rackets, Leary. If you're hiding that kid, I'm gonna get you for harboring a felon. Felon, huh? He sounds dangerous. I'll keep my eyes open. You do that. Well, from the way you polished off six pieces of French toast, a guy could get the impression you haven't eaten in a couple days. None of my business, but uh, that was the cops looking for you. I didn't tell them anything. You don't seem like the criminal type to me. Look, if you need a place to stay for a couple days, you're welcome to stay here. Thanks. Okay. Well, I got work to do over at my shop, so. You play around outside, okay? Are you working on your plane? How do you know I have a plane? That thing you flew this morning. Oh, that was my gyrocopter. No, I'm going to leave that lay. Are you interested in stuff like that? Yeah. Well, come on, if we get out of here soon enough, we'll get out of doing the dishes. I heard that. <laughs> Jonathan, I want you to meet my wife, Helen. Helen, this is Jonathan. And if it's okay, he's going to spend a couple days with us. Pleased to meet you. Jonathan, I want you to meet our baby. I say it's going to be a boy. It is. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Doctor. Now that you've met the entire family, uh, it's really bad form to ask a guest to do dishes. Go on. <laughs> mm. Max. Who is Jonathan? Is he another boy from Plainfield? Oh, I don't know about this one. I think he's all right, though. I think he just needs a place to think for a couple of days. What do you say? What do I always say? You always say, Max, you're a pain in the neck. But I loves you. Thanks. Uh, what about his clothes? We still got something upstairs that he could wear? In the trunk. This is where Helen stored my clothes from when I was a kid. I can't believe they dressed you like that. <laughs> Those are the brightest colored clothes I've ever seen. My mom washes with liquid blue shimmer. Yeah. What's this? That's the smallest radio in the world. That's a present for Helen after the baby's born. Wow, it's so cool. So little. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Radio technology is just advancing so rapidly. What are you doing? I'm trying to turn it on. Snuff box. What's that? That's the radio. That's the radio? It's gigantic. There's no smaller radio made. How do you take it to the beach? 
Who takes a radio to the beach? Everyone will one these days. I got a Japanese friend says the same thing. Come on, I want to get you dressed. Here. Try these. What's wrong? They're so small. They're perfect. I used to wear them when I was little. You must have been pretty little. Look at this. These are three mint gold coins from the Civil War that I got from my grandfather. I've been saving them to give to my grandson. cooling system I'm working on for aircraft engines uses a liquid that doesn't freeze or boil. What's this? That's my gyro directional indicator. That is going to revolutionize air navigation. I just put one in my plane. this? That is a flying automobile. In 20 years, every family is going to have one of them. What do you think? I don't know about that. Oh. Oh, a skeptic, huh? Come here. Take a look at this. I'd take a guess. What do you think it is? Um... I don't know. It's the ultimate form of travel. Have you ever thought of traveling through time, Jonathan? Going forward or backwards to any date? Well, actually... It's just a theory, I know. I mean, some of the things are not even invented yet, but I believe it would be possible. If you could go back in time, could you change things? Huh. I've thought about that more than you could know. It could be great. But if you change something in the past, it changes the present. And it could be good or it could be bad. No one knows. You're an unusual boy. Do you really understand all this? Yes. I'm going to show you something. You're about to see something few men have ever seen. Hey, they 
Don't you make a heck of a pilot? As good as you? Better. How do you steer? See that stick there? Pull it back, you go up. Push the pedals, you go side to side. She'll steer herself. There's nothing like her. I quit my job delivering the airmail so my partner and I could go in the flying business. And we built the Blue Yonder from scratch. And now I'm going to take her across the Atlantic. Does that sound crazy? No. <laughs> it does to me sometimes. But I got to do it. I got to make it across. Who's the new pilot? My replacement. Come say hello. I was just talking about you. Uh -huh. You were an ace in the Great War. Am I right? What's your name? Johnson. Well, put her there, Jonathan. Ever have warm buttermilk? It's a bee's knees. Henry? Doesn't miss a thing, does he? Jonathan helped me out of a rather embarrassing landing this morning. Uh-huh. Well, we still ought to put a bit more weight in before you take the yonder up for the load test. Well, hop in, Coog. I knew you'd come in handy for something. You couldn't get me up in one of these things for all the free buttermilk in the world. There's got to be something we can throw in. Jonathan, have you ever flown before? Once in 747. What's that? Well, I mean, never in one of these before. Well, that's the best reason to try it. Oh, got nothing to worry about. Max is a great pilot. I know. Someone told me that before. Hey, you're wearing my lucky scarf. Now remember, she's going to be a bit sluggish on takeoff. She's carrying close to 80% maximum weight. Now when you get her up, circle around and bring her right back in. I want to check the struts for stress. Buckle that belt. Mixture rich? Mixture rich. Throttle cracked? Throttle cracked. Mags off? Mags off. Contact. Contact!
And now for the Knickerbocker Roll. Check the engine. If the tailwind's good. Paris on the 18th! <laughs> Helen, our son's gonna be proud of his father. I just want him to have a father. Why do you have to go in two days? Because there are lots of pilots trying to make it first. When the tailwind's right, I gotta fly. What if someone makes it before you? Will you still go? And not much point if it's already been done. Please, just wait until after the 20th. You've got to. The 20th? Why? Because that's when... That's when... Jonathan, don't you think it's time you told me what you've been holding back? I can understand. I went through a lot as a kid. Not what I've been through. You never believed me. Don't you give me a chance? I can understand a lot of things most people wouldn't. What if I were to tell you that... that I was your grandson? Jonathan. Nick's was shortened from Nick or Bocker. My dad, your son, changed it before he got married. I came in your time traveler. Henry built it. Jonathan, those plans I showed you, they were just that. They were plans. <laughs> it wouldn't be possible for years, for decades, to consider... Remember when I asked you if it was possible to go back in time and change things? Yes. Well, I came back to stop you from making that flight. Jonathan. I can prove it to you. I can show you the time machine.
We'll talk about this when we get home, Jonathan. You don't believe me. I believe that time travel could be possible, but I don't know that you came from the future. But it's true. The machine only really works. The machine hasn't been built yet. Yes, it has. Here's the key. Don't you recognize it? That's not proof, Jonathan. I'd like to believe you. I really would, but... Don't make the flight, please. Why do you keep telling me to wait until after the 20th? The spirit of St. Louis, it's going to make it to Paris by then. It's Charlie Lindbergh's plane. Just wait, you'll see. When the wind's right, I've got to go. Now look, here's something that'll cheer you up. You come out to Langley Field with us tomorrow. There's two pilots out there that are going to take off to Paris. They don't have the tailwind, so they're going to have to turn back, but they have a beautiful plane called the American Legion. The American Legion? Yeah. It's going to crash. Jonathan, don't you think that's a bit much? In a pond, both pilots are going to die. That's impossible, Jonathan. The only pond's on the other side of the landing field. But it's already happened. It's getting late. Let's go. Tragic accident has occurred in Langley Field. It's a attempt to cross the Atlantic. Moments after takeoff, the overloaded American Legion crashed in the West Pond. Captain Davis and the Worcester are dead. The Knickerbocker guy, come on. You come with me, kid. Hold on, Leary. What's the charge? You stay out of this. This kid's passing counters the bills. What? The sergeant has a phony bill he used trying to pay for some food. Get after him. Stop right now, kid. You're in big trouble now, kid. You're in big trouble. You're up to something. You get away from my prison, I want to warn you in. Come on, Max, come on. Let's go! Get back, eh?
Okay, kid, let's go through it again for Mr. Finch. He's decided to help you if he can. But I told you the truth. You've got to believe me. He says he came here in a time machine to stop Max Knickerbocker from flying tomorrow. And he says Max Knickerbocker is his grandfather. And I'm your fairy godmother, kid. Now tell me the truth! Uh, uh, uh. I believe you, kid. Really? Sure. We just need some proof. I mean, after all, some people have no imagination, huh? But I told you the truth. I don't know where the time machine is. Well, we'll help you find it, huh? Now, what does it look like? You know, I mean, is it all one piece or what? What do you mean? Well, I just thought it might have a, uh, you know, a crank like you start a car with, uh, or a key. See, now, if we can find that part of it, we may be able to find the whole thing. If there was, I'd have it, wouldn't I? All right. Have it your own way, kid. But if you think the furniture here is unattractive, wait till you get to the reformatory. Tell me about the crash. Max, I'm afraid. I don't want to be left alone. God. I heard them talking before you came in. Did they say where it was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where? Well, everything's set for tomorrow. Plane's looking real fine. <laughs> you knew it would happen. Who knew what would happen? Jonathan knew that plane was gonna crash? Max, a lot of people said they might crash. In the West Pond, Henry, you know what the odds against that are? Max, but you're not thinking about taking this round. We decided on the northern course. Now, this is shorter, sure. You don't have a chance to ditch. I shouldn't make this trip at all. What are you talking about? I mean, maybe I'm following the wrong dream. Maybe the right dream walked out that door. Max, you're talking like you already crashed. Now, you'll feel different in the morning. Get some sleep.
Do you believe me? Well, it could be coincidence, but uh, I don't think so. Max, I know where the machine is. They hid it in the basement. The policeman did. He knows all about it. I'm going to get you out of here. Watch this stuff. Not all the time. What's he like? Dad's really great and everything, but he's different than you. Oh, I think I understand. Well, I mean, are things at all the same in your time? Are you happy? Yeah, but I missed you. Please, don't fly on Wild Max. Is that what you came back to tell me? Lindbergh was first. You took the northern one. You didn't make it. got to go back in the morning. You have to leave in exactly ten and a half hours when this counter reaches zero. No sooner and no later. I want you to come with me.
okay, we've got a lot to do. We've got to put everything back just the way it was. And then we'll talk about what it's like to travel through time. Some people have such a stronger sense of purpose than others. I suppose you'd be a lot happier sometimes if my sense of purpose was a little less strong. You are who you are, Max. That's why I love you. I'm going to make it. You know I would never leave you and the baby if I didn't believe that. I love you, Alan. Max, I love you too. All right, Cyril, rise and shine. Up and at him. Come on, kid, shake a leg. Get out of bed. Oh, no. Anybody here? My dearest Jonathan, remember, always look to the sky for your dreams. For someone very special has shown me that they can come true. Your loving grandfather, Max. like the cell window. Then he had to be here. If he was here, why didn't he just get the machine and go? Knickerbocker, that's why. The kid said something about stopping him from flying today. Come on. He should have been here 15 minutes ago. Who? The Norfolk Gazette. What? I told him to send a reporter over. You want this to be official, don't you? You 
the man from the Gazette? Yes, sir. Virgil Dooley's the name. How long you been a reporter? Just about 20 minutes, sir. I used to be in delivery. Contact! Contact! <laughs>
So, I finally found your supply. Hey, Finch? Too. I know. I tried to stop him. I did. He had to go. He said he had to follow his dreams. I didn't save him. Jonathan. Jonathan. You did something much more. Follow your own dreams now. You'll see. What are you doing in here? I have to leave. Henry. Come on. Goodbye, Jonathan. changes. Hey, you're up early. Today's the last day for tryouts, right? Go get them. Come on. 
fun where excitement is playing Walt Disney and you Come home to all your good friends Mickey Donald Goofy Herbie Alice Winnie the Pooh Mary Poppins Pollyanna You have a stubby little nose And many more <laughs> You'll see your favorite heroes Including Zorro Davy Crockett The King of the Wild Frontier And Condor Man Disney's Spy in the Sky But there's no escaping the Disney villains You could murder Lean on them Am I in your way? He's not an agent of the CIA! He's a writer of comic books! Hey, don't nobody know this is a hole up! That rotten car is driving me busy! Fire that musket, and I cut his throat! Was that anyone we know? He's your uncle! Yes, that's why I happen to know what? Uncle Alonzo has a heart. Oh, oh, oh. Want a light? You're invited to enter a world of excitement. Suspense. What did you see? Surprise. Dad! And laughter. Oh, my God. A world of tenderness. Please try to understand, Pollyanna. You're such a part of our lives now. Nancy and Angelica, Mrs. Lagerlof. And I love you as if you were my own little girl. Won't you give me that chance? Please. Tears. We've got to get out of here before it's too late, please. Adventure. And music. And more laughter. Hey, you mangy cur, come back with my car! Gilly, that shaggy dog just stole my car! Roses and rainbows. And more music. You better take the loot again. That's just the way we like them. It's magic. It's frightening. Isn't this a clever disguise? It's cute. What are you supposed to be? I'm a little black rain cloud, of course. <laughs> Silly old bear. It's fun. And it'll take you by surprise. Are you ready for the Disney lineup? You ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? I said I was ready. Disney and you. Now available from Walt Disney Home Video. Great!